Who can create things? Who does not practice good dramas but practices evil dramas instead? It is the doer, the person who does things. If you have a doer, a creator, you have the karma which is created. Therefore, there is a door and what is done. When karma is created, then the creator who made it must undergo the results of what he has done. Therefore, the text reads, the evil I have done. What is evil? There are five actions that are classified as extremely evil. Killing one's father, killing one's mother, killing an ahat, disrupting the harmonious sangha, spilling the Buddha's blood. People are inherently incapable of killing their parents, but there is a type of person who can commit this unthinkable crime. This type of person can commit the ten extremely evil acts and also the five rebellious acts. There are some people who have killed their fathers, but very few have killed their mothers. Nevertheless, it still happens. A few months ago, the newspaper reported the story of a child who had killed his mother. This happened in the United States and the child was in his middle teens. I do not know if you saw this story. The boy's mother was a widow and had raised him alone for over 10 years. Their family consists of only two people, one son and his mother. One day the mother told her son she wanted to paint a picture of him in the nude and she asked him to take off his clothes. The son did not want to do this, but his mother insisted. The son was very filial, however, and so at her urging, he took off his clothes and modeled for his mother. She painted all day from 10 in the morning until 10 at night, but still had not finished. Now his mother was not just painting all this time, but was also eyeing her son. After a while, she began hugging him and wanted to involve him in a sexual relationship. The son became very worried and refused to take part. At this point, his mother brought out a handgun and told him that if he did not want to have a relationship with her, he should shoot her with the gun. She said that if he did not shoot here, she could not resist involving herself with him. When she gave the gun to her son and told him to shoot her, he probably got a little mixed up and shot and killed his mother. After the killing, the police arrested him and took him to jail, and later at a hearing, he confessed the whole affair in great detail. I do not know what has become of the boy. This is an example of killing one's mother. Killing an ahat means to kill one who has been certified to the fruition of a hardship. This is also one of the five rebellious acts. Another of the five rebellious acts is disrupting the harmonious sangha. The sangha are always referred to as a harmonious assembly. The sangha are made up of four or more people who have taken the complete precepts. The sangha are harmonious in six ways. Harmonious in body, they dwell together. The Sangha do not fight or argue out among themselves. With speech harmonious, there is no contention. They are also harmonious in speech. When the Sangha are together, they do not argue about what is right and wrong, and they do not gossip about others or themselves. The Vara Sutra discusses the samadhi of non-contention. When those who have left the home life live together, they should not contend. They should have the samadhi of non-contention. As soon as you contend, the marks of self and others arise. When there are self and others, there is right and wrong. If there is right and wrong, then there is victory and defeat. Because of victory and defeat, there is a mark of living beings. And from the mark of living beings, there comes a mark of a lifespan. 
If you have these kinds of thoughts, you cannot obtain true wisdom. And so it is important to be harmonious in speech without contention. With blissful, blissful minds, they are happy together. The mind should also be harmonious. You should not think that you have your individual thoughts and I have mine and that my thoughts need not be harmonious with yours and yours need not be harmonious with mine. Everyone should have harmonious minds and be happy together. Being harmonious with respect to benefits, each gets his share. When there are good things, one shares them. It is not that one person gets everything, everyone gets his share. Everyone is treated equally, you get some and I get some. Harmonious in views, each has the same understanding. When studying the Buddha drama, everyone should agree and have similar views. Their views must be harmonious. Harmonious in the discipline, they cultivate together. Everyone cultivates the precepts together. These are the six kinds of harmony in the Sangha. When these six kinds of harmony prevail, the Sangha are called the harmonious Sangha. If you create factions and gossip in the Sangha and prevent the Sangha from living in harmony so that they are not satisfied with one another, so that they are jealous and obstructive of one another, you have done what is called disrupting the harmonious Sangha. To spill the Buddha's blood is another of the five rebellious acts. Some people say that since we have been born after the time of the Buddha, we cannot spill the Buddha's blood. In fact, however, if what you do to Buddhism is harmful, it is considered spilling the Buddha's blood. If you harm the Buddha jewel, this is spilling the Buddha's blood. You harm the Buddha jewel if you damage the Buddha image. Although it is an image, it is still spilling the Buddha's blood. All the sutras are the Buddha's Dharma body's wisdom life. Wherever there are sutras, there is the Buddha, the Dharma, the Buddha's Dharma body. Therefore, if you burn or ruin sutras, you spill the Buddha's blood. Further, if you burn a photograph of the Buddha, this too is considered spilling the Buddha's blood. Members of the Sangha cultivate according to the Buddha's teachings so that in the future they will become Buddhas. To prevent the Sangha from being harmonious is also called spilling the Buddha's blood. To be disrespectful to the Triple Jewel and to disrupt it is also called spilling the Buddha's blood. It is not necessarily the case then that a Buddha must be in the world for you to spill the Buddha's blood. The Buddha has already entered Nirvana, but if you do not protect Buddhism, but rather disrupt it or disturb one who has left the whole life, then you have spilled the Buddha's blood all the same. These are all classified under the five rebellious acts and are all considered to be extremely evil. Extremely evil means that there is not a more severe evil act. The retribution for doing extremely evil acts is the RVC hell. RVC is Sanskrit which means unintermittent time and unintermittent compass. Compass is also a Sanskrit word which means a division of time. There are five meanings of unintermittent. The first is unintermittent time. Once one enters the unintermittent house, there is not a single moment when the suffering ceases from the first day one is there to the very last. This kind of suffering continues in time without interruption, and so it is said that the time is unintermittent. Obviously, also means unintermittent form, referring to bodily form when one falls into this hell, one sees oneself filling up the entire hell. Even if there are many people in the hell, one still fills up the entire hell, as do the others, without obstructing one another. You have your hell, and I have mine, and everyone sees himself filling up 
his own hell. This is the meaning of an intermittent form. The third meaning of RBC is an intermittent suffering. This refers to the suffering undergone when you fall into this hell. In this hell, there is the hell of the mountain of knives, the hell of the pot of boiling oil, the hell of the iron trident, the hell of the iron stick, the saw hell, the iron net hell, the iron stove hell, the iron rope hell, the iron horse hell, and so forth. All these different hells cause the one to suffer, and because this suffering never stops, it is called an intermittent suffering. The fourth meaning of RBC is an intermittent retribution. It does not make any difference whether you are Chinese, American, or any other nationality. When you go to this hell, you must undergo the retribution of that hell without cease. This is called an intermittent retribution. The fifth is an intermittent life. When you fall into the RBC hell, you undergo thousands of births and thousands of deaths in a single day and night. How is it that each day and night you are born a few thousand times and you die a few thousand times? In this hell, you undergo your retribution to such an extreme that you die. After you die, a stimulating wind called the clever wind blows on you and you spring to life again only to immediately begin suffering. This process happens again and again. Therefore, in a night and a day, you die and are born thousands of times. This is an intermittent life. In one thought, can all be wiped away by reciting the great kings of vows of universal worthy. If you are able to recite this chapter of, on the conduct and vows of universal worthy bodhisattva, then in one thought, very quickly, you can destroy all your offenses, including all of the five unintermittent offenses. Sutra, his clan, race, and color, marks, and characteristics with his wisdom are all perfected and complete. Demons are externalists will have no way to harm him, and he is worthy to receive the, the offerings of the three realms. So the Ringo Bodhi tree, he will quickly go and sit there, subdue a heart of demons. Right and equally enlightened, he returned the Dharma will to benefit the host of living beings. Commentary his clan, race, and color, marks, and characteristics. Clan refers to your relatives, to your surname. Race means the race of people to which you belong. And color refers to whether you are yellow, black, red, or white. Marks and characteristics refers to the 32 marks and 80 minor characteristics. With his wisdom, are all perfected and complete. Your physical characteristics will be adorned, beautiful, and complete, and your wisdom will be great. Therefore, the text reads, perfected and complete. Demons and externalists will have no way to harm him. None of the gods, demons, or adherents of externalist paths will be able to trouble or disrupt you. Why? The inconceivable, inconceivable strength from the ten great kings of vows of Universal worthy Bodhisattva will protect and support you, and he is worthy to receive the offerings of the three realms. You can become one who should receive the offerings of the three realms, which means that you have been certified to the fruition of a hardship and have obtained the position called worthy of offerings. So the regal Bodhi tree, he will quickly go. You will quickly go to the base of the Bodhi tree, become a Buddha, and sit in the great Bodhi Manda, and seated there, subdue a lot of demons. Beneath the Bodhi tree, you will be able to subdue all demons, right and equally enlightened. He turned the Dharma wheel. You will accomplish the unsurpassed right and equal right enlightenment and turn the great Dharma wheel to benefit the host of living beings.
you will universally benefit all the living beings. Sutra, if one can read, recite, receive, and hold on high, Saman Dabhadra's vows and proclaim them. One's reward only the Buddha's will know. And one will obtain Bodhi's highest path. If one recites universal with these vows, then from just a small portion of one's good roots, everything will be perfected in a single thought, and the pure vows of living beings will all be fulfilled. The supreme and endless blessings from Samantha Padra's conduct are now universally transfer. May every living being drowning and adrift soon return to the lands of limitless light. Commentary If one can read, recite, receive, and hold on high Samadambhadra's vows and proclaim them. If you are able to cultivate the ten great kings of vows of universal worthy Bodhisattva and read, recite, receive, and hold them on high and also explain them for others, then you will receive a reward that only the Buddhas will know. Only the Buddhas can know and certify this kind of reward and one will obtain Bodhi's highest path. You will certainly obtain the great path of Bodhi. If one recites universal worthy vows, if someone can read and recite the ten great vows of universal worthy Bodhisattva, then from just a small portion of one's good rules, everything will be perfected in a single thought. In a single thought, everything one seeks will be obtained and the pure vows of living beings will all be fulfilled. One will be able to fulfill the vows made by all living beings. The supreme and endless blessings from Samantha Bhadra's conduct, I cultivate the practices of universal worthy, which are especially supreme, subtle and wonderful doors of practice, and I now universally transfer all the merit and virtue from this practice. I dedicate all the immeasurable and boundless blessings to all the living beings of the Dharma realm, saying, May every living being drowning and adrift soon return to the land of limitless light. I vow to universally take a cross and liberate all the living beings drowning and adrift in the sea of suffering so that they quickly go to the land of ultimate bliss of Amitabha Buddha. Sutra at that time, when Junibhoso Worthy Bodhisattva Mahasattva finished speaking before the thirst come one, this pure verses on the great kings of vows of Junibhoso Worthy, the youth good wealth was overwhelmed with boundless joy. All the Bodhisattvas were extremely happy as well, and the thirst come one praised him, saying, Good indeed, good indeed. At that time, the world honored one proclaimed this supreme Dharma door of the inconceivable state of liberation for all the Satris and Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, with Manjushri Bodhisattva as their leader. Also present were all the great Bodhisattvas and the 6,000 Bhikkhus who had matured with Maitreya Bodhisattva as their leader. All the great bodhisattvas of the worthy Kampa, led by the immaculate universal worthy bodhisattva, were present as well. Commentary at that time refers to the time when universal worthy bodhisattva Mahasattva had finished speaking before the first come one these pure verses. Universal worthy bodhisattva is a great bodhisattva among bodhisattvas, and so he is called a Mahasattva. Universal Worthy Bodhisattva explained the vast and great king of vows of Universal Worthy which he had made. The ten great kings of vows are as follows. The first is to worship and respect all Buddhas. The second is to praise the first come ones. The third is to extensively cultivate making offerings. The fourth is to repent of karmic obstacles and reform. The fifth is to follow along with and rejoice in merit and virtue. The sixth is to request the turning of the Dharma wheel. The seventh is to request that the Buddhas remain in the world. The eighth is to always study with the Buddhas. The ninth is to constantly accord with living beings. The tenth is to universally transfer all merit and virtue. 
After Universal with the Bodhisattva finished speaking these pure verses on the great king's vows, the youth's good wealth was overwhelmed with boundless joy. After the youth's good wealth had heard about these ten great king's vows, he jumped for joy. All the Bodhisattvas were extremely happy as well. Not only did the youth's good wealth become so happy that he jumped for joy, all the Bodhisattvas were happy too, and the first come one, Shakyamuni Buddha, praised universal worthy Bodhisattva, saying, Good indeed, good indeed. He said, It is really good that you have explained this drama. It is truly good. At that time, the world honored one, Shakyamuni Buddha, proclaimed this supreme drama draw of the inconceivable state of liberation for all the sages and bodhisattvas, masattvas, these great bodhisattvas with Manjushri Bodhisattva, also known as wonderfully auspicious bodhisattva as their leader. He was a leader among those bodhisattvas. Also present were all the great bodhisattvas and the 6,000 bhikshus who had matured. All the great bodhisattvas and the 6,000 bhikshus made up the Dhamma assembly with Maitreya Bodhisattva as their leader. He was the leader of the bhikshus and great bodhisattvas. Maitreya is a Sanskrit word. This bodhisattva is called benevolent, invincible, and agita. All the great bodhisattvas of the worthy Kampa. This Kampa of ours is called the worthy Kampa. What does worthy Kampa mean? It means that many sages and worthies will appear in this world. All these great bodhisattvas led by the immaculate universal worthy bodhisattva were present as well. The immaculate bodhisattva universal worthy was at the head of the great assembly. Sutra, all the great bodhisattvas who in one life would be the next Buddhas and who were at the position of anointment of the crown gathered together with all the assemblies of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, as numerous as find most of dust in an ocean of lands who came from the remaining walls of the ten directions. They were headed by the great wise Shariputra, Mahamud, Galayana, and others. All the great sound hearers, along with all the pupil gods and lords of all worlds, as well as dragons, yakshas, gandavas, asuras, garudas, kinaras, mahuragas, humans, non-humans, and so forth, and the entire great assembly, upon hearing what the Buddha had said, were all greatly happy, faithfully accepted it, and put it into practice. Commentary all the great bodhisattvas who in one life will be the next Buddhas. One who in one life will be the next Buddha is called the Dharma Prince. He is of the stage of Dharma Prince. In our Saha world, Shakyamuni Buddha is the Dharma King. When his Buddha Dharma passes into extinction, the one who will inherit the Buddha position is Maitreya Bodhisattva. Maitreya Bodhisattva in one life will be the next Buddha. Maitreya Bodhisattva lives in the inner palace of the Tushita heaven. Before a Bodhisattva inherits the Buddha position, he lives in the inner palace of the Tushita heaven. Before Shakyamuni Buddha became a Buddha, he lived there, after which he descended from the Tushita heaven entered the womb, left the womb, left the home life, accomplished the way, turned the Dharma wheel, and crossed over living beings. When Shakyamuni Buddha was in her, his mother's womb, he also turned the Dharma wheel, but most people could not perceive this state. They thought that he just spent his time in the womb without doing anything. However, this is not the case. He spoke Dharma for all the ghosts and spirits while in his mother's womb. Maitreya Bodhisattva will inherit Shakyamuni Buddha's position. Amitabha Buddha is the teacher of the land of ultimate bliss. When he retires, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva will succeed to his Buddha position in one life. When Kuan Yin Bodhisattva steps down, 
great strength Bodhisattva will succeed to his Buddha position in one life. This is the meaning of in one life they would be the next Buddhas. And who were at the position of anointment of the crown. When a Buddha becomes a Buddha, his head must be anointed. The emperors of the past, when they were about to become emperors, similarly had their heads anointed. After they were anointed, they were considered to be the sons of heaven. When the Buddha is about to become a Buddha in one life, his position is called both to become a Buddha in one life and anointment of the crown. All the Buddhas of the Ten Directions anoint with Sri Du, uh, the crown of the head of the one to become a Buddha. When Shakyamuni Buddha came into the world, there were nine dragons who anointed his head. This is called the ritual of anointing the crown, and it takes place when one dwells on the position called anointing the crown. The great Bodhisattvas who in one life will become the next Buddhas and occupy the position of anointment of the crown are not just one or two. There are many Bodhisattvas from all the lands of the ten directions who in one life will be the next Buddhas and who are at the position of anointment of the crown.